Today we're going to talk about Brene Brown. I'm a big fan of hers and she has many killer quotes. But one of my favorite quotes talks about how you should think about the people that you truly dislike. This is a tough one. Some of us don't realize that it's part of number one, emotional intelligence or EQ. And number two, that it's actually part of our success. There's an assumption that when you get to a certain level of success, you have your bestseller, you become a millionaire, whatever that metric is um, that's accepted by society, the assumption is that you don't have to deal with people that you don't like. And it's actually quite the opposite. I've worked with hundreds, if not thousands of, of independents, the creators, the not traditional entrepreneurs I talk about, and everyone's in a different place. And I'm not going to be everyone's cup of tea, as my mother would say. And you have to find a way to work with people sometimes that don't quite understand where you're coming from. She says, the most compassionate people assume that other people are doing the best they can. I live the opposite way. I assume that people weren't doing their best. So I judged them and constantly fought being disappointed. How does that resonate? I know it hit me a little bit. And I think it comes down to one simple question. When you're having a difficult time with someone, business-wise or even personally, I think you need to ask yourself, do you believe this person is doing the very best that they can? Talking about Brene Brown, the social scientist, I love her work. And we're talking about how you're going to let people down. And that's okay, that's actually part of the process. I learned this from her book, Braving the Wilderness. And she talks about how she learned this from Oprah Winfrey. So we're talking about two powerhouses that are having a discussion. And this is how Brene Brown, who's a powerhouse in herself, powerhouse herself is looking up to Oprah Winfrey. Here's what Oprah said to her. Do not think you can be brave with your life and your work and never disappoint anyone in it. It doesn't work that way. That is powerful. Um, Brene says that she, according to her book, she actually put this quote on her wall, right? So she's killer with the quotes. If this quote is on her wall and her, and her office, then you know it's some serious stuff about Brene Brown and specifically how you can fail well. Now, I've been a fan of hers for several years. If you've been watching the show, you know I really dig her work as a social scientist, talking about guilt and shame and so forth. This is one of the first quotes that I heard from her, from her book, I believe it was Rising Strong, my favorite book of hers from those. I think it was right after Daring Greatly. But no matter what the case is, it's a killer quote that you need to think about when you're failing. And if we're doing great stuff, we're gonna fail all the time. Here's what she says. Shame is a focus on self, while guilt is a focus on behavior. It's not just semantics. There's a huge difference between I screwed up, guilt, and I am a screw up, shame. The former is acceptance of our imperfect humanity. The latter is basically an indictment of our very existence. I failed many times. I even failed this past week. <clears throat> this is part of the journey, uh, but I also have a lot of accomplishments under my belt. They come hand in hand. If you're not failing regularly, as one person said, then you might be playing it a little bit too safe. We're talking about the biggest misstep and misunderstanding we have in regards to emotional intelligence. It's coming from the master, Brene Brown, who specialized in emotional intelligence. And it's actually from her book, Rising Strong. Emotional intelligence, kind of like IQ, EQ is the ability to be empathetic and sympathetic to the environment around you and to emotionally react and respond based on the context. My favorite quotes from her book, Rising Strong. If there's one thing I've learned over the past decade, it's that fear and scarcity immediately trigger comparison. And even pain and hurt are not immune to being assessed and ranked. The refugee in, in Syria doesn't benefit more if you conserve your kindness only for her and withhold it from your neighbor who's going through a divorce. Now, if you caught it in there, she calls this comparative suffering. What a powerful concept. That means that my suffering is different than your suffering, and therefore my suffering deserve more sympathy than yours. Like, wow. But we do that all the time. Today we're gonna to talk about what leaders get wrong about vulnerability. We're gonna to talk to the queen of vulnerability, Brene Brown, and she was actually talking to Adam Grant, and they were having a conversation on his podcast. And this really struck me as far as what we get wrong with vulnerability. That is such a big buzzword now, but how exactly are you vulnerable and a leader at the same time? I love this quote from her. Vulnerability minus boundaries is not vulnerability. Are you sharing your emotions, your experiences to move work, connection, a relationship forward? Or are you working your shit out with somebody? And work is not the place to do that, right? Powerful stuff.